How does the Fluke 116 multimeter compare to others in quality, its ability to measure capacitance, semiconductors, high impedance voltages, and what is the theory behind how all these functions work? As well, how can you best utilize that knowledge? What makes the Fluke 116 stand out above the others? And what alternatives might you consider? In this comprehensive review of the Fluke 116 multimeter, I'll explain all of this, and at the end of the video, we'll give you my likes and dislikes, as well as an overall summary for the Fluke 116. Let's get started. The Fluke 116 multimeter has a plethora of features, oriented toward that of the field technician. The features are many and relevant to the needs of appliance repair, HVAC, and similar disciplines. In fact, current users of this speeder may learn about some features that they never knew existed. DC voltage. This is the type of voltage that you would measure from batteries and DC power supplies. DC, or direct current, is an electrical potential that does not oscillate. It causes current to flow in only one direction. The Fluke 116's range is 1 1,000th of a volt to 600 volts with a stated accuracy of 0.5%. AC voltage. This is a type of voltage that is typically supplied by power companies and what you would measure at a residential outlet. AC, or alternating current voltage, differs from DC in that it changes direction at a rate determined by its frequency. Thus, it causes current to flow back and forth or to oscillate in a circuit. A common frequency in the US for household line voltage is 60 Hz, or cycles per second, which means that the voltage cycles back and forth every 1 60th of a second. The voltage range is from 0.06 to 600 volts with a stated accuracy of 1%. The Fluke 116 is characterized as a true RMS meter. But what is RMS? RMS means root mean square, which is a mathematical interpretation of the signal that is the equivalent to that of a DC voltage in its ability to deliver the same amount of power to a resistive load. True RMS meters are designed to measure more complex waveforms, not just sinusoidal. This matrix shows how well the Fluke 116 fared while measuring certain types of non-sinusoidal waveforms. Comparatively speaking, the Fluke 116 did well with sinusoidal and square waves. However, it did not do so well with full wave and half wave rectified signals. Low Z function. Low Z stands for low impedance. It puts a load in the circuit you are testing contrary to the standard voltage testing mode, which puts almost no load on a circuit. Low Z can be used to detect ghost voltages, compromised voltage sources, and current leakage voltages. Normally, the input impedance of the meter in the voltage testing mode is around 5 mega ohms or greater, which means that the circuit you are testing the voltage in will barely notice the meter. Low Z mode, however, puts a load on the circuit because it has an input impedance of approximately 3 kilo ohms. So when checking for ghost voltages, compromised voltage sources, or voltages caused by a leakage current, the low Z mode tends to shut them down. For a comprehensive demonstration on how to detect voltage anomalies using low Z, please see video number 66 in this YouTube channel, or click the link in the description for my blog on low Z theory and usage. Millivolt function. This mode measures AC millivolts from 6 volts to 600 millivolts and DC millivolts from 0.1 to 600 millivolts. This is very handy for measuring those small voltages. It has a stated accuracy of 0.5%. Frequency. This is a Fluke 116 measuring a 6 volt, 1 kilohertz square wave with very high accuracy. This mode measures how many cycles per second in hertz that a non-DC signal voltage is oscillating. Its range is 5 Hz to 500 kHz with a resolution of 0.01 Hz and a stated accuracy of 0.1%. Frequency measurement is accomplished in multimeters by using an internal frequency counter as well as a cleanup stage called a comparator to convert a smooth waveform like a sine wave into a clean rectangular wave for accurate measurement. Resistance. Measuring resistance for this meter is self-explanatory. It has a good range, measuring resistances all the way down to 0.1 ohms up to 40 mega ohms, with a stated accuracy of 0.9%. Resistance is the opposition to current flow. It affects AC and DC circuits in the same way. To check resistance, multimeters like the Fluke 116 inject a constant current through the device under test. 
That current multiplied by the resistance equals the voltage and can be interpreted as a displayed resistance value. Continuity. The continuity function simply gives an audible beep of resistances less than 65 ohms. It will continue to beep until the resistance is greater than 140 ohms. This is quite different actually than what was specified, but nevertheless what I measured. During continuity mode, the meter will still display the resistance values up to 660 ohms, but just won't provide an audible indication. So if you want to measure resistance values greater than that, switch from the continuity mode to the resistance mode on the meter. Diode and semiconductor check. Diodes and other devices with semiconductor junctions like those in transistors pass current in only one direction. The trade-off is that there is a loss of voltage called a forward voltage drop. So in order to test the semiconductor, you must have a voltage that is higher than that rated forward voltage drop. The meter must also limit the current through the device that is being measured. The DC voltage across the device is then measured and displayed. Any semiconductor junction, which includes most diodes except microwave diodes, most bipolar transistors, and even some LEDs that have a forward voltage drop of less than 2 volts can be tested. Zener diodes use a reverse voltage drop and are not good candidates for the diode check unless the reverse voltage drop is less than 2 volts. Microwave diodes are also not good candidates for this mode because they are essentially stacked diodes with an overall forward voltage drop that far exceeds 2 volts. The diode check range is again from 0 to 2 volts. It will give you a continuous beep for voltages less than 0.1 volts, which implies a short. A momentary beep for voltages from 0.1 to 1 volt implies a forward bias semiconductor junction. It overloads for anything over 2 volts, which implies an open circuit or a reverse bias condition. For a complete guide on testing semiconductors with a multimeter, click the link in the video or just Google semiconductor cheat sheet. Next topic, capacitance. Before we move on to capacitance, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, you can click the link in the video description at any time to purchase this meter. Capacitance. This is handy for measuring small value capacitors like those on circuit boards, all the way up to very large ones. It can measure all types of capacitors, including common electrolytics, but does not measure ESR, which is equivalent series resistance, another important metric of electrolytic capacitor health or failure. Capacitance is measured by injecting a current source into the capacitor that linearly charges it and then measures the resulting voltage across it after a given amount of time. The measured voltage is then converted by the meter's algorithm into a display capacitance value. The Fluke 116 can measure capacitance from 1 nanofarad, which is 1 billionth of a farad, to 9,999 microfarad, with a stated accuracy of between 1.9 to 5%, depending on the range. Temperature. The Fluke 116 multimeter measures temperature in both Fahrenheit, minus 40 degrees to 752, and Celsius, minus 40 degrees to 400 using a common K-type thermocouple and an adapter. This adapter is universal and accommodates many types of measurement devices, including HVAC refrigerant line clamps. The K-type thermocouple is a junction of two dissimilar metals that, when heated, generate a voltage that is proportional to temperature. The Fluke 116's stated accuracy is 1% plus an offset of 10 degrees Celsius or 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Current measurement. This is done on the Fluke 116 in line, which is a traditional way, and maxes out at 600 microamps. This function is oriented toward HVAC measurement of flame rectification. Such a test will be conducted in this manner, with the meter to be effectively inserted in between the probe and associated input to the board. Note that this is the only innate ability this meter has of measuring current. A separate clamp meter can be purchased that uses a voltage measurement mode to display amps. There's a link to that clamp in the description of this video. This range is between 0.1 microamp to 600 microamps DC and 6 microamps to 600 microamps AC with stated accuracy of 0.1 to 2.5 percent. Bar graph display. This is a really nice feature. The built-in bar graph display mimics that of an analog meter's ability to show peaks and trends. It has a frequency response similar to analog meters, giving you a sense of changing values over time. Here's an example of the bar graph display showing the changing value of a 6 volt, 1 hertz sine wave offset by 3 volts, so it varies from 0 to 6 volts. The bar graph display gives you a good feel for this movement, whereas the digital display can't keep up. This is because of its lower frequency response. 
min-max average mode. Here's an example of measuring a 1 hertz sine wave with a peak value of 3 volts. This means that it swings 3 volts above 0 and 3 volts below 0 with an average of 0 volts. Let's see how the Fluke 116 handles this scenario. Okay, we are measuring the sine wave. Notice again the bar graph display swinging up and down just like an analog meter. Let's toggle to the max reading. It is reading close to 3 volts. Now on to the min reading. As expected, it reads about 3 volts. If we toggle to average, it is close to 0 volts. If we wanted to lock the values in, we would just press the hold button. Through experimentation, I have found that the min-max function works for frequencies up to about 1 hertz, or 1 cycle per second. So any values that change faster than 1 time per second, which appears to be the update rate of the display, may not be accurately recorded. The hold button. Pressing the hold button locks the value on the display with its current value until you press it again, after which it continues sampling. Range button. The range button allows you to bypass the auto range mode and stay within a specific measurement range. For example, if you're measuring DC volts and wanted to stay within the range for a 9 volt battery, you would just press the range button until you reach the resolution for the desired scenario. Backlight. Simply press the backlight button for 40 seconds of displayed backlight time. So it's time for the things I like and don't like about this meter. Things I like about the Fluke 116. Quality. I've owned other Fluke multimeters, including a Fluke 11 that I used in a TV repair shop back in the mid-1990s. It still works today. Any other multimeter I've owned didn't last much longer than five years without issues, so the quality is definitely there. The leads fit snugly, the selector switch is mechanically smooth, yet deliver it. Accuracy. The accuracy, both stated and realized, are impressive. The Fluke 116 sports many of the features needed for field technicians, such as for HVAC and appliance repair. Beyond the normal multimeter features, some of the functional aspects that stand out for me are the diode check, capacitance, and the low Z function. Diode check. This outputs a current limited 2 volt bias for testing the forward voltage drop of semiconductors. This voltage exceeds the forward bias voltage of most all diodes, except LEDs, but will however test many LEDs, those that need less than 2 volts of forward bias, that is. Capacitance. The capacitance function is very handy and quite accurate. This function is well utilized for HVAC and appliance technicians. The low Z function. This is one of the most handy features of the Fluke 116, in my opinion. It can detect ghost voltages, compromised voltage sources, and voltages resulting from current leakage. It puts a load in the circuit that will shut down low capacity voltage sources, giving you a better understanding of a voltage's legitimacy and integrity. Bar graph display. For those who have ever used an analog meter, you know how much better they are at showing peaks and trends in digital meters. Well, this bar graph display mimics that ability and does it quite well. It has a frequency response similar to analog meters, giving you a sense of changing values over time. This is a super handy function that the competing Klein CL800, for example, does not have. Okay, things I don't like. Current measurement. As a multimeter targeted toward field technicians, it does lack some desirable features that are frequently needed in the field. For one, it has no built-in or integral way to measure current above 600 microamps. The current measurement function provided by the meter is narrow in its usage scope as it is specific to flame rectification. Although very useful for the HVAC technician, there are a plethora of cases where current measurement is necessary while in the field. So it's the innate lack of practical current measuring capability that is a negative for me. Full and half-wave rectified signal measurement. Being a true RMS meter is designed to manage irregular waveform shapes in addition to sinusoidal ones. It seemed to do well with square waves in that respect, but like all multimeters that tested it, it didn't do so well with full wave or half wave rectified sinusoids. Diode check. This is a handy function for testing semiconductors. One of the nice things about this meter, as noted, the bias voltage is a current limited 2 volts DC. This is less than the 3 volts DC that the competing client CL800 has, which is able to actually test high-powered LEDs that need about that much voltage to forward bias. So I'd like to see a bit more bias voltage than 2 volts. From an engineering standpoint, it takes little effort to up that voltage with no drawbacks that I can see. Voltage ranges. Although the Fluke 116's voltage range maxes out to a hefty 600 volts, and I really wouldn't want to measure voltages that high anyway, competing models top out at 1000 volts. I doubt this is a tangible issue for most technicians, but I did find it to be a bit annoying. 
In summary, the Fluke 116 has many of the must-have features for field technicians. It is of very good quality and accuracy and has the feel of durability and longevity. It checks most of the functional boxes for HVAC and appliance repair disciplines. There are other competing meters available, though, that have a more comprehensive set of features and frankly check all the boxes, except for maybe flame rectification current measurement. So yes, you can get a truly full-featured meter at even a lower cost than the Fluke 116, which deems the Fluke 116's significantly better quality and longevity to be, in my opinion, its primary differentiator. Although you can get more bang for the buck with competing multimeters like the Klein CL800, how many times will you have to replace those other meters before your Fluke breaks down? Doing videos like this takes a tremendous amount of time. If you'd like to purchase this feeder, using this link in the video description will help support my channel. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.